Holy crap, what a mess. Um, Welcome back to Cat on a Sofa. Uh, this is um, a mess, so I'm going to try to make some sense of this in a second. Um, so yeah, um, hi, I'm Jinxie Cat. Welcome back to Cat on a Sofa. And today I would like to talk about 87 North Productions, formerly 8711. And um, yeah, um, you want to know what? It's so incredibly difficult to find um, what I would consider a complete list of their films in any one source on, on Google. I've just been sitting here for 10 minutes trying to find it. Uh, their Wikipedia page. Uh, if you go to John Wick on Wikipedia and, and look up the details of the film, it clearly says 87 North Productions. If you then follow that link to the 87 north page on wikipedia it doesn't list john wick as one of their productions i don't know why this is um it, it's a complete confusing mess and no one source that i've gone to lists all of their films and some of them seem to say um the jason statham movie safe is one of them as far as i know the first movie they actually completely produced as like their thing was the um was john wick the first john wick that's what they founded the company with this is the first film they made as far as i know and uh yeah they are absolutely one of my favorite studios right now uh like with, with these and tom cruise who as far as i know doesn't have his own production company but tom cruise is like pushing the way forward for practical stunts uh, in a slightly different way, 87 North are also doing uh, a similar thing, although their focus obviously is on more, um, I want to say realistic action. Um, at least it's more grounded in reality. Like, yeah, you could argue that like John Wick pushes what a human can do to its absolute limits. But as far as the stunt work goes, and especially the gunplay, it, it, he actually does, you know, they they keep track of the reloads, and, uh, and he's he's not, like, inhuman. I, I know that in, in Nobody, uh, he definitely takes um, also an inhuman amount of damage, but that, let's, just, let's just push that onto the side of, you know, slightly unbelievable, but still almost kind of realistic. But... Yeah, them. so yeah, Chad Stahelski basically was the stunt guy in Hollywood for a long, long time. He worked with Keanu on on The Matrix and God knows how many other projects. Like if I was to try to go back and um, and actually look up the all the films they've worked on, it would take, take ages to list them all. Um, so I'm just going to focus on the movies that they have produced and... Uh, I I really like this studio. It is, as I've just said, my absolute favourite studio. And um I, I, I look forward to everything they release. Now uh, I I I saw um uh, Violent Night recently and I did enjoy it. But I don't know, it didn't completely connect uh, as much as I would like it to. And I think I think Violet Night is their weakest film for me so far. Maybe I need to watch it again. I mean, I didn't dislike it. I did enjoy it, but I I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought. I, I think it was a little bit light on the action. Um, there weren't enough action scenes, and I found myself not really caring about the overall plot all that much. Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely my, um, my least favourite of their films. But that's fine. So... Let's just talk about. Uh, let's just talk about John Wick. So this one actually, John Wick, got by me as um, a film. I hadn't seen it. I don't know what I was doing uh, um, when it came out. Was it twenty fourteen, fifteen? I always forget. I want to say it's fifteen. Uh, yeah, two thousand fifteen. And um, it got past me. And in fact, John Wick two was on the verge of releasing. Um, when I watched the first one, my dad told me about it. and says, why the hell haven't you watched this? You should go out and watch it. And uh, I immediately did. And I was like, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, ever since then, I've really come to be a really big fan of the studio. I think the training uh, 
that, that Keanu goes through for these films is nothing short of spectacular and he, his dedication, but not just that. Chad Stahelski just... They, 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 as good as they are, I, I almost have a dislike for Chad Stahelski. Um, I'll, I'll clarify that. It, it's, it's, um, he basically made such a good action film in John Wick that was so well shot and so well choreographed and edited with minimal, like, cuts. You, you can actually see what's happening in wide shots. And he made it so well that he, kind of, he, he he made John Wick the bar from which I now judge all action films, basically. And um, when you have too many cuts in any given uh, fight scene, like, it, it just makes it worse. Now, I've gone back since and watched things like um, uh, The Bourne Identity, and, and they kind of pioneered the super, super frenetic, like, cut, 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 cut kind of thing. Um, but the difference with that film as opposed to some other films, the Matt Damon still put in the work. They they still had really well shot and choreographed fight scenes. And that if you actually did just watch them watch those ones from a wide angle, they would probably still look really good. The problem is that we had far too many people trying to imitate it and that they use that style of uh fight editing in order to make it look faster than it really is and as a result it just comes across as bad uh, and and the culmination of which i think he's taken three where it took uh liam neeson like 15 cuts to jump over a fence uh, and i know that's not technically a, a fight or an action scene but um i don't know it kind of just it, it just shows how to do something wrong you know and i know it's probably to cover up um uh, Liam Neeson just getting older and less able to do it well, but I don't know. Like I, I do wonder what happens when Keanu and and Tom Cruise when they become too old to do these stunts. Who's gonna pioneer this stuff? Because ain't no one else like trying to put in the time. Like I've said about um, Top Gun Maverick, you could probably have replicated that film in a studio with a green screen. And still got 95% of the way there. And it would probably look amazing. But that extra 5%, that's where it's all at. So, yeah. So, the anyway. Um, these are my... Um, these are the ones that I watch. These are the um, these are the ones for viewing. I, I kind of wish I just had an array of um, Parabellum. But I don't. Uh, so, I actually think this is the very first one I got of um, the John Wick films on 4K and uh it's it's a rather nice if um damaged now steelbook being that it's high gloss and um its own case damages it this was my first um this is my first introduction to uh glossy steelbooks that get damaged by their own cases and if you look at it in the light you can probably see on camera the um, really bad horizontal micro scratches, but if you do that, you can't see it. But I know they're there, and it's really annoying. Uh, that's a real big problem. I wish um, I wish these companies would try to fix. But um, let's not uh, focus on that too much. So, yeah, I saw this on Amazon fairly uh, early into my... I would say no... Steelbook collecting, um, I, I wasn't as big into Steelbooks um, when this came out, and I am now, and it comes with a rather nice coin, and um, and the Continental, smaller than the ones shown in the film, but these are like um, the access cards to get into certain places, and it's, it's, well, it's basically a painted piece of metal, but it, it's rather nice, and I enjoy it. And, um, I don't know, I think John Wick 2 would probably be my favourite of the three. Although I absolutely love all three of these films. They are um, among my absolute favourite action films, which is why I wanted to, um, why I wanted to do a showcase of 87 North today. So yeah, there's the John Wick 3 steelbook that I have, or well, one of them. And, um... At one point, when I won a little money uh, a while back last year, I decided to grab these on eBay. I decided to grab these on eBay because um, they were... Well, I'll tell a lie. 
I actually had one money previously a few months before I bought these. And this was before I'd committed myself to um, double dipping. I was like, well, I already have them on blue uh, on, on 4K and I don't need them. And uh, then at some point I decided that um, I, I actually did like double dipping and that I did want them on on Blu-ray, uh, on, on Steelbook again. And with Nova Media being one of my favourite um, boutique premium retailers, I decided to get it. This was a little bit damaged. Um, it was still sealed too, uh, and, and I decided... I didn't know if it was like a like a, a secondary seal, and I, I tried to peel it off like an idiot. So yeah, John Wick 1. Yeah, I, I like Nova Media. Nova Media was my first premium retailer and 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 as a result of that uh i don't know i just have a bit of a brand loyalty to them just because they were my first one i i don't know this is the way my brain works so yeah john wick 2 is just such a phenomenally good movie i, I think it improves on the first one in so many ways but i already think the first one is fantastic too and this is the parabellum one uh, i i think nova media just um announced another wave of john wick steelbooks too another 4k wave but i don't i mean i don't even have their second wave of john wick steelbooks which was the first wave of 4k ones that's getting rather confusing right and um yeah so those are the john wicks um I bought the other day Atomic Blonde. In any case, um, yeah, uh, I just I don't know what it was. It it didn't it didn't ring with me, um, and I think I ended up turning it off. And it was a while back, a while after that, that I decided to try to watch it again, and um, I I really enjoyed it the second time. Um, and I don't think I even you know really knew much about um, eighty seven North at the time, but uh, I do now. So yeah, and I, I really enjoy this, and uh, it has such a good um, long take. I I can't remember if it's a true long take or if it's um, if it's just one that's um, stitched together. Uh, either way, I, I I mean I I will admit that like like true long takes that are properly unbroken and actually filmed um, in one actual take. They they are more impressive, but when you're actually going to um, when you're actually watching them, uh, I I think the effect is the same either way. Like if if you're watching a scene and it appears to be one unbroken take, it appears at the time that you know it, it it's as entertaining to me as um, a true like long take, uh, and, and the one in this is just fantastic. Like what what I like about the people that do decide to make these really long take um action scenes they they always show just how much the wear and tear on on the fighters um you know it like you can visibly see by the end of it that she is um absolutely like wrecked and exhausted and barely barely fighting and just going by on on will per alone and uh, that's what I like about these scenes. They they just I don't know. They they just bring a sense of actual true danger, like that you can see that these people are, are fighting to the point that they can barely move. And, and I really like the um, <clears throat> I really really like the fight scene in this one. Uh, it's yeah, it, it is one of my um, favourites, and it is definitely the uh, the standout in the movie. I, I might just ditch this 4K Amore and um, do a disc swap. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I really, really enjoy Atomic Blonde now. Um, and then we have Nobody, which um, when when I first saw... I, I hadn't seen the trailer, and I it was just after I started going back to the cinema... I guess it was the year before last, and um, I I just saw the the thumbnail for it on um, on Odeon's website, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, and I nearly didn't, I I very nearly didn't go to watch it. I don't know what was wrong with me. I wasn't researching films very well back then, and uh, I didn't know it's an eighty-seven North film, and I wasn't even, you know, too crazy about them at the time. Anyway. 
And um, then I saw the trailer and I was like, you know, it looks pretty good. And, and I, I eventually did go to the cinema to watch it and I was absolutely blown away. It became one of my favourite films of, um, I want to say 2021, um, but I could be wrong there. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, yeah, this was... Ugh. Um, nobody became one of my favorite films of um, 2021, and I absolutely love this film. I, in in some ways, I find it more rewatchable than John Wick, uh, and and Bob Odenkirk is just phenomenal in the role, uh, and Hutch man, he, he's he's such a good character, and he wants to retire like John Wick, and um, he he gets dragged back in. Uh, I, I won't go into the detail about it, but yeah, it has some great fight scenes too, especially the standout one on the bus where um, he he was still very clearly, you know, incredibly rusty uh, and just not used to fighting. And um, like as the film progresses, he, he's very much back to his old self. And uh, yeah, I, I absolutely love this one. So when, when this um, collector's edition came up last year, I immediately bought it. I don't have the... Um, the steelbook in the um, case because it is incredibly prone to uh, getting scratched and um, yeah as a result I'm just keeping it in this until I can get myself an o-ring protector to maybe fit in here and that brings us to the most recent film I have um, Bullet Train uh, now I I'm a huge David Leach fan now um, I love Hobbs and Shaw uh, I almost put Hobson Shaw in here. I don't think it has any actual connection to 87 North, though. I don't think it is an 87 North helmed film in any way. So I'm not adding Hobson Shaw or Deadpool 2. I don't think they um I don't think they 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 um have anything to do with them. But they are David Leach films. Um so yeah, um you if you watch the trailer for this, you will immediately know if if you were a fan of Deadpool 2 and Hobbs and Shaw, you knew exactly what kind of um style of movie you're getting. Uh and I did, and I fully expected to enjoy the hell out of it, and I did. And I really, really like this film. I've watched it a bunch of times since getting it on um on Blu-ray, and I really enjoy it. Like Brad Pitt is also always one of my has always been one of my favourite actors anyway. So um I, I was I was sold on this from, from the very first second of the first trailer and uh I I absolutely do love it. And that brings us um that brings us to uh the uh, elephant in the room of Netflix. Netflix are currently hoarding their um their catalogue of movies which really really annoys me. Uh I I I I remember it's got to be like nine years ago now that I first had a subscription to Netflix. I had um like a free trial and and I've kept my subscription unbroken ever since. Like you're talking about all the way back from um, their Daredevil season one and BoJack season one days. Uh, uh, and I, you know, I'm not going to be getting rid of my Netflix subscription anytime soon. I primarily um use it for tv shows or um mostly their original movies and um they they're not releasing um their films on physical media and i i'm going to be forced at some point to seek out um uh bootleg customs which i don't want to do i don't i don't buy bootlegs i haven't done it for years you know back in the early 2000s everyone knew a guy who knew a guy that got um, pirated movies and and they were all always like these crappy things you know in, in crappy printed cases um and and most of them were you know back of the cinema camera jobs and it you know I very quickly realized that it was not my preferred way to watch a film um I I don't think the bootlegs that you get for these would be like that I I suspect that if you found someone to do a nice custom um and the you know they would have a printed disc and it would be like a nice um true high definition um like rip from the files wherever they get them from uh i don't, I don't know if it's a screen cap but i you know they they they're pretty good but i don't want to do that i want an official release so we have kate which um it, it's basically a, a movie about an uh, assassin and she gets uh 
radiation poisoning uh, and she basically has one day left to uh, find the people that did it to her otherwise she you know well she's dying one way or the other, one way or the other. there is no redemption for her she is going to die she has one day to kill the people that did it and, and that's the film that's a great plot for me you know it's uncomplicated and it has some really good action scenes and um the other one was a more recent one um the day shift which again i really enjoyed although i, I will admit to um being a bit tired when i watched it uh, as sometimes i am on my movie nights and uh i think i need to watch it again but yeah jamie fox uh and snoop dogg even they were really good in that film and i do want to watch it again but netflix have a bunch of other films uh like extraction man extraction such a good uh chris hemsworth movie again with like it's got like a 13 minute long take um it's not a true long take like the actual thing uh was filmed in like several different locations but it's stitched together that makes it appear to be one um continuous take and, and the fact that it took months to film it you know i think does make it really really impressive um so yeah and, and then you've got films like um the old guard with charlie's theron and um six underground with uh ryan reynolds and even the new one uh red letter which i really enjoyed too uh these are all films i, I want a physical release of and i, I don't have them but i'm getting slightly off topic because i this was supposed to be just a video of 87 north and um yeah i'm really really looking for um looking forward to john wick 4 and uh I hear rumours constantly that uh, Chad Stahelski, after John Wick 4, will be directing a reboot of The Highlander um, with Henry Cavill at one point. Uh, I don't know where that currently stands with his new um, Warhammer 40k stuff, but um, that was the rumour. And what do we have? Um, Anna de Armas, uh, the ballerina, uh, which is a bit of a John Wick universe tie-in, but I don't think, I don't know how much it's going to tie in, but... Um, that you know it's from his um from the same people that you know taught john his uh his it looked like some sort of wrestling i don't know how much training they actually did beyond that for him but it it, it looks really good well I'm, i can't say that it looks good because i haven't seen anything about it but it sounds good and um oh yeah anna de Armas was really good in gray man uh the gray man so yeah um that's why I'm I'm quite um I'm I'm Bond as well. She's really good in Bond, so yeah I'm looking forward to um every single film that these guys put out, and I think I will end up getting Violet Night. Oh, as I said, it was my um it was the weaker of um the things. Anyway, that's about all I have to say today on that, guys. And uh, if you did enjoy this video, please do consider liking and subscribing, guys. And uh, I will see you actually. I will be putting out a video on Monday, uh, tomorrow, uh, because I should be getting my Black Adam uh, steelbook finally. HMV took their sweet time in posting that out. So, yeah, guys, I will catch you on the morrow.